good to go so we will be discussing about uh, the various topics on dark web and i hope you have you, you have heard about dark web and all those kind of things uh, in an uh, mostly in an illegal way right so i hope everyone have heard about like everyone in this in this uh, webinar heard about uh, the dark web in an illegal man mostly the dark web is known as like uh, non like that the dark web it's a, it's a uh, there is a lot of myths uh, rounding as uh, again is like dark web and all those stuffs so let me introduce myself uh, before starting the session me myself i'm sharath from alappuzha kerala which is a god's own country known as and um, currently i'm working as a cyber security consultant and trainer at a uh, set, uh, software consulting group called technovalley software india travel limited and other than this technical domains i am also a soft skill trainer like a motivational speaker and uh, career training all those and a public public speaker also so this is an overall idea about me okay so uh, mr faiz i am not able to speak in hindi or urdu i am better with english and malayalam not able to speak in english hindi or urdu okay so i am very sorry about it okay so uh, let's continue so what are we going to discuss today we are going to discuss about the whole internet okay so whole internet what is internet we need to know what is internet exactly before moving on to the darker side of internet right and then exploring the dark web we will be having some practical sessions i will showing some how to go through the dark web and all those stuff and after that we will be discussing about the tor project the tor project is the backbone or the brain of uh, dark web okay uh, so after that we will be discussing about the tor projects uh, tor project and then we will discuss about onion services and we also need to know what is the purpose what is the purpose of uh, dark web why should why the dark web is invented and what is the purpose of dark web and at the last conclusion after after that you will be having a q and a session in the q and a session you can clear all your doubts regarding dark web okay so we are uh, starting the session on dark web first internet i hope everyone have heard about the internet internet a lot we are we also are using the internet for host this session right and internet is an essential part of everyone's life in the start everyone's life internet is an essential part which we can avoid in our daily life right so what is internet we need to know what is internet uh, correctly what is internet how to define the internet the internet can be defined as uh, someone is uh, okay so the the internet is defined as nothing but it is a interconnection of different networks around the globe and it is nothing but uh, it's like a, a what a, a connection of a lot of computers a com connection of lot of computers around the globe that's all right and by connecting these computers we are transferring files from one computer to another computer and from that computer to another computer just think about the networks uh please don't write and uh, there is showing a lot of writings in the screen can you please disable those kind of annotations and all, all those stuffs uh hello guys there is a lot of writings in the screen so please stop the annotations that, that will be better okay great that's great okay now it's clear okay so let's move on okay so uh, the internet is like just think about a network a network in your own home you are creating a mobile hotspot in your mobile and after that you are connecting your computer to your mobile phone okay and by connecting this mobile phone and the the your your computer or the pc or laptop anything you are creating a local network in your own home right and just assume that there is a 10 networks like that. there's a 10 networks like uh, the your local network and you are connecting each of the networks like uh, so will be connected 10 of interconnected networks like we are you are interconnecting all of these networks together by interconnecting these all network you can call it as internet that's what internet is internet is the interconnection of networks interconnection of lot of networks and the whole internet can be defined uh there is also some annotations coming on can you please uh, turn off the annotation i'm i don't know how to turn off that 
I don't know. I do how a connect come here like the control over that. Okay, uh, let me check. Disable. Yeah, I'm disabling. I have disabled the annotation. I have disabled it. Okay. Now I'm sure that no one can. Uh, okay. Okay, that's it. So, uh, how can I clear this annotation? You can clear by clicking the pen icon. Okay. Where's the pen icon? Oh, just wanted to let me clear this. Oh, sorry. Yeah, got it, got it. Rest all of the annotations. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cleared it and uh, we are good to go. Let's go. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, someone is uploading some files. <laughs> some kind of reverse shells. Okay. Uh, anyway, so we are moving on. And the end, uh, the whole internet can be defined, divided into three different, different categories. The first category, uh, and I'm sure that uh, you know, you all of you, all of you uh, know about the internet and the, the classification of this internet also. The thing is, surface web deep web and dark web these are the three categorization of the, the whole internet okay uh, someone is raising hands may I know the word what is the reasons if you have any kind of questions harsh raised your hand anyway uh, so the end thing is divided into three surface web deep web and dark web let's move on to now what is do anyone have any kind of questions no right so if anything is there we can we can uh, clear those questions at the end of the session okay great okay that's okay harsh okay uh, someone is uh, uploading some reverse shell but i don't think it will work here anyway uh, let's leave it and let's come back to the session the surface web i will call it as the place where owned by search engines it is owned by a lot of search engines right the google bing yahoo DuckDuckGo, a lot of search engines are there the surface web it is the common place where everyone everyone in this net in this internet have access to everyone can access the surface web like the google all those stuffs and the reality is only four percentage of the whole internet is exposed in the surface web just assume that the four percentage of the whole internet and it is only that's uh, like the only four percentage is there in the surface web yeah clear right and let's move on to the second one deep web deep web when you're hearing the deep web some of you may uh, interconnect the deep web with the dark web and i have seen a lot of a uh, person as who is saying that the deep web is a part of dark web dark web is a part of deep web all those kind of myths but i have done a, a thorough research on this and i have got to know about the deep web is not a part of dark web as well as dark web is not a part of deep web the the things are entirely different the deep web is different and the dark web is also different it is a different different parts that's not interconnected between the deep web and the dark web okay so uh, the deep web is the place only for authorized users only a place which is on list uh, which is uh, uh, able to like uh, the users will be able to uh, like uh, the, the normal users the normal like uh, i can i i'm able to do the deep web i'm able to access the deep web and i'm again accessing the deep web a lot of times in a day the a great example for deep web is gmail gmail how, how the gmail will become a part of deep web let's analyze it right the deep web uh, the gmail is a part of g deep web the thing is yeah i will share the slides uh, i will i'll share i'll upload it to slideshare and i will share the slides that's not a problem okay so the gmail is a part of deep web and how the thing is gmail if you want to access gmail if you want to access your inbox you need to give your username as well as your password right without giving your username and password you cannot access the deep web 
no no we don't need tor to access the web we can use the normal browser like google chrome or those kind of browsers to access the web because deep web is also part of normal web normal internet and the gmail facebook twitter all these stuffs are a part of deep web only it is not a part of dark web it is not a part of tor all those stuffs it is a part of a normal internet the gmail because it is a place of authorized users it is a place of authorized users and the authorized users means when you access uh, when you need to access the gmail you need to give a username and password when you need to access facebook you need to use your username and password all those stuff right if you are uh, using a username and password to access the website it means that is a part of deep web it is a place of only for authorized users yeah facebook is also a part of deep web you may some of you may have some difficulty to realize that truth but it is the truth like uh, it is a uh, the Web Facebook is a part of deep web, and Gmail is a part of deep web. It is a place of uh, authorized users. Okay, and the surface web is only having four percentage, and some other percentage is uh, taken by the deep web, which is Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, all those steps. Okay, then uh, you, you can ask your questions after the after the session. Okay, I will clear all the all the all the doubts after session. Okay, yeah, we can discuss the uh, doubts after this. Jitendra, R T C M, all us. we can clear the uh, doubts after the session okay and we are getting into the real topic our our today's our topic the dark web the dark web and what is dark web when we are hearing dark web i think 90% of you guys will be uh, hearing like it is a purse of the most or the pro hackers or the the most wanted criminals or the place of illegal things all those stuff right so uh, the thing the dark web is the place of anonymous users it is not the place of pro hackers it is not the place of illegal uh, illegal uh, uh, stuffs it is a place of anonymous users when you are hearing anonymous you may think that yeah that's a great place for hackers that's a great place for elite hackers or pro hackers all those stuffs but it is a place of anonymous users when you are saying anonymous it is the uh, a definition which is given to the anonymous it is we are just hiding our identity when you are hiding your identity it it does not mean that you are doing uh, illegal things it uh, it just means that it is a place of like a uh, uh, privacy that's a, that's a, that's the that's the primary thing yeah that's the primary thing the privacy is the primary thing as you can see in the in the slide you can see that it is the it is the important part our privacy becomes very much important very very much important right the privacy why the privacy is much more important just assume that just assume that uh, you are in front of me you are attending in a classroom session and i am the trainer okay just assume that thing okay assume the scenario and i am asking you some of you uh, like i am just randomly selecting a person and asking you to share your telephone your mobile phone with me your smartphone with me okay and i am getting your smartphone and i am opening your whatsapp and going through all the chats i am reading all your private chats just just assume that i am reading the chat with your lover or i am reading your chat with the your friend or your group chats or your personal chats all those stuff. i'm reading that what will you feel yeah what will you feel when you when when i'm doing that let me know in the message section what will you feel when i am i'm opening your your message your whatsapp and uh, and uh, and i'm reading all the private messages what will you feel what do you think what will you feel in that scenario just let me know in the message section Hat, <laughs> no way. It's a the yeah the like like Shikuma that that's the right one. Loss of privacy and I Aman, mean, that's correct. Very bad. You will feel very very bad because I am infringing your privacy, right? I'm getting into your privacy. I'm reading your private chats. That's not a good thing. We all of us will be like irritated. Will be very much irritated when someone is reading our our private messages, right? No, none of us will like uh, someone is reading our, our WhatsApp messages. Do you like that? No. Yeah, harsh. You will become angry. And Navin, yes, correct. The privacy is lost. Yes, you are. You guys are very correct. You will become angry. You will feel very bad because someone is infringing in your privacy, right? That is known as privacy. That's why we are saying 
the privacy is very very much important the privacy is that much important for everyone that's why the dark web is here but is it uh, invented for the for the for the sake of privacy no it is not invented for the privacy actually the history of dark web says that it is invented for a secure communication between the spies of us army us army and which is developed or invented by naval research laboratory which is us naval research lab uh, they are the guys who invented the dark web or the dark net which is in a normal no, normal way we are saying that dark net okay dark not dark web it is dark net okay but dark web is the most common usage uh, word that's why i'm using so dark web is invented by the us naval research laboratory for a secure communication Communication between spies because when the spies are communicating, if someone found them, I found someone found their communication, then that is a, a threat to their life, right? Someone may be like, uh, someone may like, uh, uh, like uh, get into their, uh, like uh, they may threaten, like they may threaten by their life, right? That's why they, there is a chance for the 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 loss of their security. That's why the U.S. government invented a place where the spies can uh, talk to like uh, talk in between very freely without uh, fearing about the loss of their security all the steps okay so that's the uh, reason behind the invention of dark net or dark web and the uh, the technology behind dark web is known as tor currently most commonly it is known as a tor but tor is not only the uh, the place which is we can use the dark net. there's a lot of other softwares which we can use for using the dark net okay and i i will give you the list uh, at the, the at the last at the end of this session okay uh, and the participants are raising hands i know you you may have some kind of doubts but yeah sure we can uh, we can clear all the doubts at the end of the session okay so we can clear all the doubts just note down your doubts and let uh, ask me at the at the last okay okay so the technology behind dark web is tor actually the onion router technology or the onion router is uh, created by the us naval research lab itself but after uh, on if i'm not wrong on 2007 it become public it become a public project it's a now the tor is an open source project anyone can contribute the project around the globe there's a lot and lot of uh, volunteers for the tor project and on 2007 if i'm not wrong the tor become public and from that time itself the tor is known as the onion router project or the tor project okay the tor project is live now and you can go to their official website torproject.org in that website you can find all the details about the onion router and why that name why the the onion router why the onion is there just assume that yeah the assume, just assume that the onion the normal onion which we use uh, which we use uh, to, to 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 create uh, to make curries in our home right yeah you know the onion right the onion have a, a speciality which is a multi layered thing right it is a multi layered thing yeah it is uh, like uh, there will be an outer layer when we are opening the outer layer of the onion there will be another layer on on opening that layer there will be another one there will be another one and there will be another like there is a multi-layered structure right the, for the onion and that's how the end of tor works there is a multi-layered structure for the root uh, for the tor or the onion router okay so let's uh let's look into the what is you the end of tor project is all about how the uh, what is tor project actually it is started by the u.s naval research laboratory as i have said to earlier and the tor uses onion protocol for communication between users and the servers you got it between uh, users uh, and servers you can use uh, the protocol Tom, you can't hear anything i'm sure that i'm audible to any everyone right someone is saying that uh, i'm not uh, audible can you hear me clearly yeah so yeah actually uh, some of me you have some kind of audio issues but i'm sure that i'm audible to everyone very good very good so let's uh, let's come to the point the tor uses onion protocol for communication between users and servers and when we are when we're saying the users it is a kind of client to cl uh, okay uh, so it is a kind of the onion protocol is the backbone of the tor project the end of tor project that's why it is known as the onion 
router. The onion is the protocol which we use to uh, to create. Uh, the onion is the protocol which we use to communicate between the users, between the users. So, so the how what is onion protocol and how it is working. What is the speciality of onion protocol? Why would we trust on that protocol? Okay, so we can move on to the onion protocol. Before that, let's look into how the dark net or dark web is uh, working. How it is giving us the anonymity or the, uh, the 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 privacy. Let's look into it. So it, this is the basic structure. This is the basic uh, basic communication uh, between the Alice. Uh, like uh, the Alice is trying to like uh, so just a minute. Okay, so this is the Alice and Alice is trying Alice need to communicate between with the Bob and Jane and Here there's a lot of computers are here, right? So in this computers these computers which is marked with a plus sign or addition sign We, we will use these computers as the nodes or as the part of the Tor project or the Tor Network. This is not the onion network or Tor network. Okay, so in the Tor network, these computers which is marked with a plus sign will be the nodes or will be the part of Tor uh, Tor network. Okay, so in here, the in the next seven, you can see that the Alice is going to talk with Bob and he she is using the Tor network for the communication. And in the green lane, uh, in the green links. This, this means the communication is encrypted and the red means it is not encrypted. Okay, let's look into the example. In this you can see that Alice is communicating the first computer and this computer, this one is known as the entry node. Okay, it is known as the entry node. Okay, great. And then Alice is going to communicate with the entry node and this communication will be an encrypted communication. By default, all the communication in the Tor or the Onion uh, network will be uh, the will be the uh, encrypted one and after that from the entry node to middle node it is known as a middle node and it is also encrypted then to the exit node it is also encrypted okay and then uh, then at the last the communication between the exit node and the user will be unencrypted it is not encrypted got it this is the basic communication or the basic working of uh, of the tor network okay yeah, Shamil, that's correct. You are very correct. Source of the first node is encrypted. The last node will be unencrypted. Okay. And this is another communication. In this communication, you can see that this is the path, right? This is the path from Alice to this computer, to this computer, to this computer, to Bob, right? And then Alice is in the next communication. Alice is going to uh, communicate with Jane. And here you can see that the entry node have been changed, have been changed to this computer and to this computer and then to this computer. You got it alice to this computer to this computer to in this communication the entry node is this computer middle node and the exit node so in the the thing is every 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 communication in each and every communication of tor the things will be changed like the network will change in two to three minutes in every communication the network will be entirely different Got it? The entry node, exit node, all of them will be entirely different. But in sometimes the entry node may be specific, like in some kind, entry node will be uh, like uh, in about uh, like some communication, entry node will be persistent. The thing is, entry node is very limited in number because entry node how entry node is the person or the computer which sees how original IP address, right? The entry node can see our original IP address so that the entry node is much more protected. It have much more advanced technologies of encryption. And also it should have a 24 by 7 uptime, which means that the entry node should be available by 24 by 7. So that the entry node is very limited in number around the globe. There is only, if I'm not wrong, four or five entry nodes are there in around the globe. Okay. And around the globe, the tower have a node number of 8,000 and 377 if i'm not right there is a 8000 plus nodes are hosted around the globe by without by some volunteers there is no payment for them there is no nothing for them but they are doing it for their own their own like oh, what a volunteership so there is a, about 8000 tours around the globe okay so this is the basic working of the tor network i hope it's clear for you if there is any doubts please mark it and let me uh, please ask me at the end of the session okay so this is a tor browser and we will be looking into 
the practical use of Tor. Okay, so I'm switching my screen to the Tor browser. This is a Tor browser basically. I hope you got, got every uh, like uh, the, the idea of working Tor, right? So we'll be looking into Tor. Uh, let me switch my screen. Okay, I'm sure that everyone can see my Tor browser, right? Yes, great. So you can see my Tor browser. So we are going to look into how uh, the thing will work. Okay, great. Okay, so first I'm going to uh, log into the google.com. This uh, a normal thing, google.com. Okay, in this uh, the, I have opened the google.com in Tor browser. Yeah, uh, Harsh, you are not able to see. Uh, you can see that, right? Yeah, I get it, like your doubts will be uh, cleared at the last, okay? Okay, you can see that, right? Okay, here in this google.com, okay, now you can see that actually I'm browsing it from India. But here, there's a, like a, a, the, the location is different, right? It is showing like, I don't know which is this country, Norge, something like Norge. And you can see the other language is different. I'm, I'm using it from Kerala, but uh, it is showing me some other country. Yeah, maybe some France, okay. So anyway, let me do a little search, my IP. So you can see that like, I don't know which is this language. I'm not able to recognize this language but I will use the Google Translate. Mostly, I don't know, like someone is saying it's French, okay. So mostly I'm French currently, in the view of Google, I'm currently in French, okay. So this is the thing. Uh, it is uh, like, it, no way, no way, uh, no way, uh, maybe in the France, okay, something. So the thing is, I'm in, some other country because why because it is showing me some other country because my exit node is in Norway. you can see that this is a tor circuit you see this this is the tor circuit in this from my browser to united states in the united states i do have my first node which is the entry node and then I'm, my traffic will be forwarded to the sweden and that will be known as my middle node and then to norway it is my exit node you got it it is the exit node, then to google.com. You got it? This is the my entire communication path. Clear? This is my entire, that's why, like I'm going to refresh my browser. Now I'm going to refresh my browser. I'm going to refresh the thing by like I'm refreshing. Now let me, uh, like I'm saying, I need a new circuit for this site. I'm clicking on new circuit. You can see that. Now from United States to Germany, then to Germany itself. So uh, my uh, public net uh, for my entry node, which is in United States, then to Germany, uh, which is in my middle node, and then to Germany itself, which is my exit node. I'm creating new circuit. You can see that it is now United States, U United States, Germany. So here Google is saying like I'm a, I'm a robot because this much of uh, traffic is coming from my system. So it's saying I'm, I need to do a robot verification. So that's the thing. I'm, I'm sure that you can, you, you got the thing. This is the thing. Okay, so now I'm in Netherlands. Just with a new circuit, I'm in Netherlands right now. Okay, so this is how the Tor gives us privacy. So this is a basic a basic uh, website, right? This is the Google.com. So let's uh, look into a Onion website, which is a dark website, a dark web link. I'm using the hidden uh, hidden website hidden website link. Okay, so let me copy here. Okay, here I'm using a website. This is the website, and uh, I'm sure that this is uh, like uh, yeah, like uh, this is uh, not uh, you are not, uh, we are not able to understand what is written there. It's a combination of some random characters, right? And then it is a hidden wiki. Actually, it is a thing of hidden wiki. But uh, 
that's the thing it's a uh, in pure it will be much more uh, very much slow this is uh, loading because very speedily because i have gone to this website earlier and the thing is cached in my uh, in my desktop that's why so it is much more slower okay so this is a hidden wiki that uh, hidden wiki in tor here in the hidden wiki you can see that a lot of editor speak editor speaks these are this these all are some kind of onion websites and as this session uh, is hosted publicly i'm not able to show you some kind of dark web uh, markets or something because it is an illegal thing so i'm not showing those so here you can see the ahmia.fi ahmia.fi is actually a tor uh, search website actually when i'm trying to access the ahmia it, it were not opening before starting the session i have tried to open the ahmia.fi actually it's a tor search search engine okay you can find oh, yeah i am able to find that okay so the ahmia is also able to you can also open the ahmia in normal browser with the this is the website ahmia.fi in that website you can see a kind of search engine in the search engine you can search for services and if you can find the tor services okay there's a lot of other other websites which you can find tor services like the tors and there's also a lot of other is available you can use that that's not a problem in the in the hidden wiki you can find a lot of financial services it will be classified uh, sorry cla uh, categorized you can find it a financial service commercial services here you can find the dark web uh, dark web illegal stuffs i'm not going to open those stuffs and domain services on your anonymity and security all those stuffs you can find a lot of things just go to this uh, tor wiki you can find a lot of things and this is the ahmi okay here you can see for i'm um, searching for uh, imperial library it's a great library service in uh, tor imperial library you can find a lot of useful resources from imperial library okay yeah that's illegal to say that i'm not uh, supposed to do so so anyway uh, like i'm uh, sorry for sorry for for saying just the kind of thing. so imperial library is a great uh, is a great source of uh, of books so you can find a lot lot and lot of books in the imperial library that's very good uh, so ahmia will automatically forward you to that when we are opening this thing ahmia will automatically forward us to the imperial library here you can find a lot of stuffs like for you can uh, found some kind of cyber security books some kind of bug bounty books any kind of books you can find it here okay so uh, okay then so that's about uh, the accessing into tor and let's go back to the slides and i will show that uh, that it's once more when we need to okay and here okay now you can see my presentation right yeah your doubts will be cleared at the last please note down and let me know okay now now now, now you can see my screen right now my presentation right okay great great so uh, now we are moving on dugdugo what is dugdugo dugdugo is the default search engine of uh, the uh, the default search engine of uh, of dark web of the tor browser it is a default search engine you can find a lot of uh, good resources from dugdugo like you can uh, uh, like you can uh, get uh, like uh, uh, like you can no a lot of things like uh, from you can get get the the same thing you can get from uh, google okay? got it the dugdugo is a great search, search engine which is great for privacy also that's why dugdugo is the default search engine of uh, your tor browser okay because it's uh, also uh, it's also uh, like uh, dugdugo is more into users privacy they are saying that the dugdugo or the ddg is saying that they will not uh log any kind of information they claim to i have said that they claim to we just need to trust them i cannot say that they are not saving any kind of searches but we just need to trust them okay they are claiming to they are not tracking users they are not uh, storing any kind of information from the users they all those steps okay so dugdugo is a default engine in tor browser and this is the the uh, onion website of the dugdugo okay dugdugo uh, the normal onion onion website of dugdugo you, by opening this thing, this link you can get into dugdugo okay and then things to know about mobile tor yeah, yeah, most of you are using mobile rather than using a desktop or laptop so when it when it comes to mobile uh, how you can use tor in your mobile service okay so when it comes to tor in your mobile service 
the thing is the design of mobile devices makes it fully pri full privacy impossible we cannot get the full privacy in our mobile devices because the design of mobile is like mobile uh, is like that you cannot uh, you cannot make a full privacy okay so mobile tour is best for censorship prevention so censorship prevention means uh, the thing like the uh, like uh, for the indian government itself uh, the indian government is blocking some kind of porn websites right and some kind of other websites also it is blocked in our internet so it's a kind of censorship where the government blocks some websites or some application from us from the internet and we can prevent those kind of censorship using mobile tor using tor network itself we can use uh, we can prevent the thing okay and we can also provide better privacy for some threat models which we can get more privacy when we are using mobile okay and then uh, we are making it better all the time and better options for mobile devices are coming out soon and uh, the the tor is making much more better efforts to make the mobile tor even better even better even better yeah close that's a vpn is here but the VPN, we cannot trust VPN because VPN is saying that they will not log any kind of other details, but we cannot trust VPN. They may log out details. There's a, there's a chance for that. Okay. So, and then we are moving on with the session. And this is the Tor browser for Android. You can get it from uh, the Play Store itself. Just search for Tor browser. And this is the logo. You can get the Tor browser from the Play Store. And this is the Onion browser, which is uh, uh, the Tor browser for iOS. There's a lot of fake. Uh, browsers for iOS is out there in the uh, Apple Store. You can get that the original Onion browser from the uh, Apple Store. You just need to search Onion browser and you can see this logo. And this is the uh, Onion browser for iOS. Okay. Orbot. When it comes to Orbot, Orbot is a kind of uh, 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 the, the 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 thing which we which we can use in our mobile phone to save uh, to 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 route our communication through the Tor network. Just assume that you need to you need to uh, route your WhatsApp communication or Facebook communication through Tor network. How to do that? You can use Orbot in your mobile. By using Orbot in your mobile, you can route all the uh, communication through Tor network without even using uh, the Orfox or the uh, the Tor browser for Android. Orfox, it is the name of Tor browser for, uh, for Android. Okay. Without using Orfox, you can use the Orbot to route your traffic uh, through Tor network for uh, for your uh, all the things, all the stuffs like uh, Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, Chrome, all the stuffs. Okay, you can use Orbot. It's a great tool for censorship prevention and privacy. You can download it from the Play Store itself, Orbot. Okay. And then coming to the thing, what are Onion services? The Onion services are some kind of like they are using uh, the 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 Onion routing protocol. The Onion routing protocol for uh, for sharing the communication, for using uh, for giving us more and more privacy, more and more privacy. That's the first thing. Okay, privacy. And the regular internet advisories where you are with him, like uh, the your ISP, the Geo, Airtel, uh, Vodafone, uh, all those types of ISPs may uh, may log your information. Okay, so uh, those kind of uh, like uh, Mr. Sani, I'm not able to provide those kind of information because those are not legal. Okay, so uh, that's the first thing, guys. I'm not sharing any kind of illegal information. You can find it online. I'm not able to share those because I'm not supposed to. Okay, don't use that. It is the, the like we can come to that later. Okay, so the the Tor Onion sorry the Onion services is the service which we use the. Tor network or the onion routing protocol to protect our privacy. That's the onion services. The website in onion services will be followed by dot onion. You have seen that in the in my previous uh, screen share. Uh, we are using the dot onion websites if, uh, if we are using the onion service. Okay. And the Tor have created a sneaky way to hide the file data and related metadata. The metadata means nothing but the data about the data because the information about your data, that's a metadata, okay. So the Tor created a sneaky way to hide your file data and that is known as Onion services. The Tor found a great service, great, great, great choice for preventing the ISPs from logging your information, from seeing your information, okay. And then comes to the Onion services, dark web links are special links having dot onion as their extension dot onion is the extension of dark web links okay and the dot onion websites cannot be opened using normal web browsers we need to use a special browser named as 
tor for accessing this website without using tor we cannot use uh, we cannot access dot onion website okay you have seen that now and the tor directs internet traffic through a free worldwide volunteer overlay network consisting of more than 7000 relays to conceal a user's location and users from anyone conducting network surveillance or traffic analysis for the example of the the america's prism project you know the prism project right the prism project is something kind of like a uh the getting into users privacy using some kind of trusted uh, companies like google microsoft all the stuff right and the thing is the tor will help you to prevent those kind of censorship of out of the like a uh, uh, the the uh, like what the government like indian government is also getting into the users privacy you know that so our, our prime minister how issued an order not now about a year ago i have seen that in a newspaper issued an order for the nbi ro cbi all those all those government agencies and government in the government agencies the government given them a special order the prime minister given them a special order saying that they can check anyone's personal laptop or desktop and in our in our it act also there is a section for getting the private keys of users from the from the companies yeah clues we can clear our doubts at the at, at the end of this session okay please wait for the uh, for the end of our session okay so we are moving on and the government uh, can like a uh, government is like uh, censoring our our own communication so we need to get out of that surveillance that's why we use onion services okay and the onion services is encrypted without https we you know the http and https right and the onion communications are even encrypted end to end encrypted even without https we don't need an https server or the web, uh, website for encrypting our communication okay so we can use the uh, the uh, the https for, uh, like uh, we can use the uh, uh, http website in an encrypted manner in our tor browser okay the onion protocol have that kind of uh, speciality and this is the working of tor relay this is how the tor works and i will explain this picture to you and you can see three kind of keys three different colored keys and this is the entry node okay and all of these nodes the entry node entry node nodes two computers the your computer and the middle node okay and the middle node knows two computers the entry node and the exit node and the exit node knows two computers which is a middle node and the exit node which means the entry node do not know what who access this thing and which is what is the ip address of the user so you got it right the exit node only knows the uh, previous one and the after the computer after that the uh, destination server and the middle node okay there's a lot of advanced things in this you need to like i'm just saying the basic things okay so the end exit node only knows the middle node and the destination server you got it so yeah, they don't the, the exit node doesn't know what is the what is the ip address of user what is the ip address of entry node of those steps they just know the middle nodes okay and the middle node know the entry server and the ex, uh, entry node knows the user ip okay this is the basic thing and how it is achieved how this privacy is achieved using the multi layered encryption that's how the onion the word onion comes to the see and here you can see this this the this white lane this white lane okay you can see the white lane right this white lane is the our data okay in our the first communication just because before getting into the entry node you can see there's a three layered encryption the three layer means this is the first layer the second layer and the third layer and the data is encapsulated with the the data is encapsulated with the three layered encryption so you can see the three layer encryption there right and after getting into entry node entry node will decrypt the first layer you got it so the entry node do not know what is the data in it so entry node don't know what is the data in it they just know what is the ip address of our middle net the middle node that's all the entry node will get so the after decrypting the first layer of encryption the middle node uh, the uh, the entry node will get uh, get to know who is the middle node and the data will be forwarded to middle node and in the middle node it de it decrypts the second layer of encryption you got it the second layer of encryption will be decrypted by the middle node and then it forwards to the exit node and the exit node will do what it will decrypt the uh, the third layer of encryption and after that the exit node will share the data unencrypted in an unencrypted manner to the destination you got it this is the concept of onion routing this is the this is the working of tor relays okay and then 
what is the purpose that's the um, foremost thing right and before that we are moving on to one more practical session i'll share my screen you can see that right you can see my screen right okay i hope you can see my tor browser right okay great okay so uh, oh sorry that came to a coronavirus so okay so here in the google you can see that there is only three computers right united states germany and germany if when i'm going to uh, create a new circuit it will show my united states which is the entry node and germany which is my middle node and netherlands which is my exit node right i'm using a normal website a dot com website right and let us know let us look into the hidden wiki sorry in the hidden wiki i'm using the dot onion website you can see that right and here when we are checking the thing the browser will forward my communication to the united states then to france then to germany and after germany it is not going to the destination rather than going into just destination it is going to a relay uh, what is a relay a relay means i have told you that there is an 8000 plus tor network or tor computers that uh, is available uh, in the in the entire globe okay uh, in that 8000 plus computers the communication after germany the communication will be forwarded to another computer uh, and then it will be forwarded to another computer and then it will be forwarded to another computer and in this way the thing the, the communication will be will be gone through some kind of random vision random computers around the globe so that we can achieve what we can achieve a hundred percentage anonymity you got it that's the concept of tor circuit that's a, that's the beauty of tor browser in in the case of only only website it will happen in the case of normal website it will not happen in the case of a normal website it will go through three websites and then after that it will go to the google.com in case of onion websites you can see that it is going through the uh, three websites and after that it is going to uh, relay uh, are all are those relays in germany no 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 i don't know where are the relays that's the that's the beauty of this thing uh, the even the host or the even the user doesn't know where are these relays it may be located in germany it may be in located in us it may be in uh, in sweden in uh, yeah anywhere in this world it may be even in india i don't know where the relays are okay we don't need to know and what if one of those relays are monitoring us no 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 the the the, the relays are the created by the the volunteers volunteers of tor browser and the volunteers of tor network okay and the volunteers will not monitor us that's the first thing we adhere to uh, the tor project okay and uh, the that's how the relays work and even we can also create a relay we can I, even even i even i want to create a relay i can create the relay okay so uh, that's how the, we can host that relay if, if, if we want to but it will cost some kind of money okay so if you need to host a relay you can do that and uh, it will go through some kind of relays then it will go to the destination address that's the beauty of tor browser it will happen only only if it is an onion browser or if it is an onion website and i will show you one more onion browser onion website which is much more useful to you guys i'll show you that too uh, you, you you are all of you are using uh, the web uh, the the facebook right and facebook do have an onion website facebook do have an onion website and the website is facebook called www.onion using this using that using uh, this facebook or www.i.onion we can hide our uh, identity no 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 it's a legal one you can see the uh, the the certificate you can view the the identity of facebook.i facebook inc menlo park california so it is the original one okay it's not a fake one okay you can trust this site and facebook created this website to uh, to do what to hide our to identity to protect our privacy so that the facebook will not know will not know from where we uh, from where we are using this uh, this website from where from which computer we are accessing to the site. so those kind of information will be hidden so we can achieve what it's we can achieve the privacy the hundred percent privacy that's the that's the thing about uh, on it so you can see that I'm using a lot of services in the uh, in in Tor browser but none of this is illegal why because 
these all are created for privacy that dark web is created for privacy only and for encrypt for secure communication that's the that's the primary concept or the primary uh, primary usage of tor browser do not assume that the tor browser or the dark web is created uh, for producing some kind of illegal stuff for producing some kind of drugs from guns or from uh, some weapons don't assume that that okay it is created for protecting your privacy only that's the first thing you all need to use tor browser you all need to use dark web why not for accessing illegal things there is a lot of accessing illegal things right and how this illegal things came to the tor world because the tor is used to protect the anonymity or protect the privacy or protect the users information and as we are humans humans do have a special kind of thinking what the thinking is nothing but the thing is we will use any stuffs in the world in the, around the globe we will use those stuffs for in an in a uh, like like in a bad way right any stuff any stuff in the world we will use that in a in a bad way that's a that's a like that's a natural uh, thing how happens to a human right so when it comes to uh, the purpose it is just for uh, yeah i will clear all your doubts after this session okay and the time is going on that's why so let me let me complete the session after that we can go to the q and a session and in the case of purpose the first and foremost is privacy rather than privacy we can use it for whistle blowing also whistle blowing means nothing but just assume that you do have a uh, evidence regarding your governments uh, uh, your regarding your governments what your governments are uh, some kind of corruption and you need to produce the uh, evidence to a media how can you do that if you are going to reveal your identity you, it may you may need to for uh, you know you may need to face some kind of issues from the side of government right so you need to hide your identity in that case you can use dark web and the uh, the the medias like uh, cnn bbc all all of them have uh, those kind of uh, uh, like onion onion websites bbc do have the official onion website you can use them and protection from censorship and surveillance censorship and surveillance from whom from your corporate employer from your organization or from your government anyway you can protect from censorship and surveillance from them okay the, these are the purpose of dark web or these are the purpose of uh, what these are the purpose of uh, the tor browser also okay do not think that these things are created for illegal things okay do not think these are created for illegal things that's the important part okay and as a conclusion uh, after this conclusion we can go for the uh, like what uh, those kind of q and a session okay and as a conclusion i will say the introduction of internet given us gave us a lot of opportunities to enhance our efficiency and time management right when in the in the previous like in the in the ancient times in the 2000 and 2001 we need to uh, write a letter or we need to post it for uh, to some of our cousins right but now we don't need to do that we can we can use the whatsapp we can use the the facebook to send a message so it given us a efficiency and a time management for you for for us right the internet do have a great 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 good side but along with these benefits it comes with a bad side also like child pornography that's a that's the first and foremost uh, the problem in the in the world in the in the in the internet and also when it comes to dark web like was the dark net or dark web is giving us a great way to manage our privacy and block our silence the block, block our surveillance right but we are using it for illegal things that's a that's a like a they do not do that ever because the dark web do have a lot and lot of good side and you can use you can use the dark web for a, a great things okay so use your brain that's the first and foremost thing i i have to say to you. use your brain everything in this world have a good side and a bad side do good use the good side okay and uh, that's all about it now thank you and now the questions now the questions come okay and uh, one more thing uh, yeah i will say how can you find the door. and one more thing uh, for contact me you can use my personal blog which is www.rootsaclabs and if you need to in case of contacting me you can use the rootsac labs and this is my company technovali software consulting you can uh, we are doing a great of training sessions and you can browse to them also okay that's all about it now the q and a session okay